Ladies and gentlemen, if you could find your seats. That'd be great. First, sorry for the delay. Closed session went a little bit over, but we should have plenty of time. One of the presentations is here. We don't think the second one is, so we should have plenty of time to finish the presentation on your uh, clock here. This is the regular meeting of the City Council, City of Desert Hot Springs, and the City Council serving as the City Successor Agency, the Redevelopment Agency Board. For June 6, 2017, this is our presentation period at 5.30 tonight. Uh, we have so far one presentation, and we're going to ask that Eileen Flores, Government Affairs Representative for Southern California Edison, join me at the front. And we'd also like Ashley Eckerd from Desert Hot Springs High School, recipient of a scholarship from the Edison International Scholarship Program, join us up front also. And if she want any family friends up there, we're more than welcome to come up. There'll be some picture opportunities. We'll meet you right at the podium here. to the cameras here. <laughs> um, first, I'm going to give Aileen the mic, and she's going to explain what the scholarship's about, and then I have a presentation from City Council, and then we'll hear from Ashley. Good evening, everyone. Once again, my name is Eileen Flores. I am the Government Affairs Representative from Southern California Edison, and I work along with many cities, including Desert Hot Springs. Um, Edison International is the parent company of Southern California Edison, and Edison International helps fund educational programs because one of our top priorities is helping nurture the scholars of tomorrow. Um, this year, 30 high school seniors um, that attend school or live in within the Southern California Edison Territory were awarded with a $40,000 scholarship. Um, these scholarships were awarded to those who are pursuing studies um, in STEM programs, which is the um, fields of science, technology, engineering, or math at a four-year accredited um, university or college. And of course, they demonstrated outstanding academic success. Um, when I found out that Ashley Eckert from Desert Hot Springs was one of the recipients, one of the first thing I thought of was, I need to let the city council and the city manager know, because this is something that the community really can be proud of, something the community, her teachers, her family. So here we are today so that we can um, welcome Ashley into the Edison Scholar family. And Ashley has a few words to share. Hello. Um, I would like to thank Edison for providing me with the scholarship, for thinking that my education is worth investing in. And to my school, too, because um, I've had some really great help along the way, including Mr. Bullis, who is here today, and from my counselors and my teachers for, for leading me along the way so I could find out what I wanted to do, which is, I'm, which is what I'm going to end up studying. I'm going to be studying computer science at UC San Diego this fall. And I'll be leaving in August to a summer program. And from there on, I'll just continue my studies and so I would just like really like to thank everybody that has pushed me along the way, my mom, my friend, <laughs> my friends, <laughs> and the community, because this is really something for the community, because I was born here, I was raised here, and it's something, and, and it's just I'm very thankful for all the help I've had along the way. And I would like to thank Eileen, especially for coming out here all the way and just to support me and, and present me with this honor. I'm very thankful. Thank you. And Ashley, on behalf of the, uh, the mayor and the city council of the city of Desert Hot Springs, we hereby honor Ashley Eckerd, Desert Hot Springs High School, um, on her $40,000 scholarship through Edison International uh, Edison Scholarship Program. Uh, congratulations, and we hope you can come back to the Coachella Valley and do wonderful things here. But go get your education, <laughs> and use this money wisely, and uh, congratulations from the Mayor and City Council. Thank you.
friend for good us. Good job. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> 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 How are you? Congratulations. I'm going to stand back here. You're covering <laughs> half of me, so it only goes back. <laughs> I'll stop. <laughs> We need you in here. Come on. Wow, let me see that. Wait a minute. I don't know. Keep looking at Polly's dorm room. That's okay. Party. I got one more. Picture. Okay, there's party in <laughs> dorm block C, was it? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, with that said, is there anybody from the YMCA here? Yeah. All right, we'll move that presentation to the next council meeting. We'll be in recess for until 6 o'clock. Gentlemen, if you can find your seats, we're going to get the meeting started. All right, this is the City of Desert Hot Springs regular meeting of the City Council and the City Council serving as a successor agency. All right, the regular meeting of the City Council and the City Council serving as a successor agency to the Redevelopment Agency Board for June 6, 2017. This is our 6 p.m. regular session here at the Carl May Center. And again, we wanted to thank the Mission Springs Water District for allowing us to utilize their chambers. Um, I believe Russ Martin, the president, is here. Thank you very much. That was... Uh, it was a fiasco for a few months as we had two different floods happen here and we had to utilize our chambers. And uh, so again, thank you to the Mission Springs Water District for that. Um, we will call the meeting, as we called the meeting to order, we now take a roll call. Council Member Betts? Present. Council Member McKee? Present. Council Member Zavala? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Parks? And Mayor Mattis? Present. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Parks is attending a promotion for one of her grandkids tonight, so she will not be attending the meeting. She was here earlier for study session, closed session, but she's had to leave. Uh, family comes first. Mr. Mayor, a motion to excuse the absence. Is there a second? There is a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 The absence is excused. I'm sure she'll be appreciative of that. We're going to have our invocation and our Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, our invocation is going to be given by retired uh, Reverend Paul Miller. Um, I just threw in the retired part because he loves to tell people he's retired now. And then uh, our Pledge of Allegiance, our flags will be presented by, after the invocation will be presented by Troop 1606 and they will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Should we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to even gather and not having guards out the front door telling us we can't come in. We thank you for the freedom that we have at the expense of so many. And so on this day, we also remember uh, the lives of folks given in, uh, for, the f for freedom's sake. And so this evening, we pray for your blessing upon this time, upon the deliberations, the decisions made, that all would be to your glory and benefit this community each and every one of our citizens. For we pray in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Police attention. Color guard attention. Color guard is back. Color guard, prepare to post colors. All those in uniform salute. All those in civilian clothing, please place your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Color guard, post colors.
color guard salute. Two, color guard regroup. Color guard dismiss. Very good. Thank you again to Troop 1606. All right, a city attorney will now report on closed session. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the City Council, we do have one reportable item with respect to number four on the agenda. Uh, the City has entered into a tolling agreement between the Atkinson Family Revocable Living Trust and the City of Desert Hot Springs relating to an extension of tentative track maps uh, 35009 and 35448. Uh, the tolling agreement would extend uh, the time to sue. It's approximately 180 days. I'm saying approximately. I think it's a couple weeks shy of that. The vote um, in closed session was 3 1 uh, 0. The three votes that were aye were uh, Councilmember Zavala, Councilmember McKee, and Councilmember Parks. Uh, nay was Councilmember Betts, and abstained was, um, was uh, the mayor because he had a conflict of interest. Uh, that is my, oh, one other thing is the agreement isn't 100% finalized. City Council gave the direction to the city attorney and the city manager. To, uh, to negotiate a couple further terms. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. I'm sorry, but I didn't state my recusal ahead of the meeting when I got, got into it. closed session. Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. I realized that I had an item that I had to recuse on, and that dealt with purchasing some property or something that was near our salon. So I recused, I left the room, I didn't participate in that discussion. All right, uh, now that all the recusals have been stated on the record, uh, the report's been given. We'll move on to the approval of the agenda. At this time, we'll be approving the agenda in whole, plus a consent calendar in whole. Um, so if there's any items that need to be pulled from the consent calendar at this time, we would do that. Mr. Betts, you have a recusal on a couple of consent calendar items. You do not need to leave the room, but just uh, state your recusal. I'll be recusing on items 23, 24, and 25 because I have property that I own within the affected area of those uh, uh, landscape lighting and maintenance districts. Any other recusals? All right, with that said, I'll take a motion on the agenda. And Move consent. approval of the agenda. Second. Press your button there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, please vote. Mr. City Clerk. Motion pass passes unanimously. Mr. Mayor, if I can make one announcement. So yes. if anyone is here for the Rancho del Oro um, assessment ballot proceedings, um, if you're here to turn in your ballot, we are doing that over in this corner over here. Thank you very much. Uh, after we get through public comments, it'll be the first public hearing tonight will be the Rancho del Oro um, proceedings, and we will make more announcements on dropping off ballots and how that process will go as we get there. Public comments at this time pursuant to the Brown Act, any persons may comment on matters of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of a city council not listed on the agenda. If it is listed on the agenda, you must speak at that time. Under the Brown Act, the city council shall not take action on or discuss matters raised during public comment portion of the agenda that are not listed on the agenda. Comments are listed to the first 10 speakers or three and at three minutes each. Speakers may not yield their time to others without the consent of the mayor. All comments are to be directed to the city council and shall to be devoid of any personal tax. Members of the public are expected to maintain professional, courteous decorum during public comments. I have blue cards in the back there you may fill out to speak on any item that's not on the agenda. You don't have to fill one out to speak on the agenda. We will actually just call you forth from there. Our first speaker tonight is Judy Shea, followed by Eddie Johnson. Your three minutes are on the side boards. Uh, if you could watch your time, please. Good evening. The sideboard? The yeah. side monitor, sorry. Okay. Hi, Judy Shea, Desert Hot Springs, CEO, Desert Hot Springs Community Task Force. We've been providing service and service providers, facilities to this city for since 1989, 91, um, and that amounts to tens of millions of dollars worth of service and facilities. Um, we want to open up a veteran's home Okay, and it's right next to a residential assisted living facility. The type of persons that we will facilitate are like your uncles, your fathers, your brothers, um, people that are close to you like my brother was to me when I brought him here from Chicago and kept him alive for four years until he died of uh, Agent Orange after two tours of Vietnam. Um, these persons will have to be 
clean and sober. They will have gone through drug treatment, um, whether they be it coming from um, the rescue mission or the ranch, some, some of that nature. Uh, they will be giving vocational counseling, educational, mental health, and, and the uh, part of this will be put through um, smooth transitions, which we are negotiating the memorandum of understanding. There'll be peer counseling and e benefits through the VA. Um, these people are not going to be the drudges of the world. They're just going to be folks that have uh, men that have post traumatic stress disorder and uh, need the extra help, and they need to help with their benefits. They need not to be sleeping out in the desert, or you know, we need to get them into the, f the services they need and then put them in the permanent housing. They can stay there as long as they like, okay? We're not gonna say 90 day restriction. You know, it can be a veteran's home like they have in Barstow. You know, we, that's the closest one I know of that we have is in Barstow. Yes, there's services over there in Loma Linda, and yes, they have to travel there. And AMVETS is saying habitually that they don't have enough people that drive to Loma Linda. I know I used to go three times a week with my brother and uh, to get him the services he needed. And I increased his benefits just because I'm a little bit, you know, have a little bit more in the ball than him. And, um, you know, his psychiatric, uh, to Dr. Casey at, at Loma Linda, he improved 300%, you know, and I got his benefits three times what they were giving him. So these people need to, you know, these veterans need to leg up. They need it now. I have a nephew in a mental health place right now because they send him to Afghanistan, they send him to Iraq. We got 21 vets killing themselves every single day. We need to give them the help they need, and it needs to be now. You know, it, I, I just feel very uh, strongly about this, and I just have too many deaths in my family, you know, from my husband, my brother, my cousin, it goes on and on. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you. Eddie Johnson followed by Russell Fletcher. My name is Eddie Johnson, Vietnam vet, um, and Desert Hot Springs. I want to compliment the city and everybody involved in doing this Veterans Park. It looks gorgeous up there. New benches, new table, new lighting. The flag is awesome. Everybody took your time to do it. You did it well. So I want to compliment you guys. Great job. Number two, the flag here is torn, the U.S. flag, and hopefully we replace that very soon. It's flying kind of raggedy. <laughs> but that's why I wanted to talk about the Vietnam Wall. Would I be permissible to do that? Two and a half minutes. Go for okay, it. Okay, I'll go slow. No. <laughs> Vietnam Traveling Wall will be here the 22nd of June. 6 p.m. is the opening ceremony, even though it's set up by 2 o'clock. We encourage everybody to come out to the opening ceremony. It'll be a good ceremony. And also, we'll be here for 24 hours a day through the 26th. 11 o'clock, they start the closing ceremony, and by noon, it's over. And we just scored the 21-gun salute. Honor Guards will be here to do that again, like we did in 2011. And I hope everybody comes out for this event, at my event memorial for the Vietnam Memorial Combat Moving Wall. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eddie. Russell Fletcher, followed by Irene Rodriguez. Irene Rodriguez is the last public speaker I have on non-agendized items. Mr. Fletcher. You can, be, you can hand them to the city clerk. They'll make copies for the city council. They won't be handed to them tonight, but okay. uh, they will be tomorrow in their mailboxes. I need you just to speak into the mic so they can be recorded. Thanks. Full question, I got violations at the house where I live out there on 7th, but yet I have pictures of here of the city same violations at the city yard, and they, they, they want to fine us for it. So I wanted to be, uh, our fines to be suspended until the city can get their stuff together and not give me a code violation for what they're in violation of. And one of the violations is for parking on dirt. I complained two years ago about ARCO towing, parking 49 vehicles at a time on the dirt out there, and they said, oh, we're gonna look into it. We made them get a business license for the storage facilities, but they never did nothing about it because ARCO towing has a, a contract with the city. So they get to slide for two, two years now, but yet they're gonna fine us $200 for a vehicle parking in the dirt that they don't have any picture, prior pictures of it. It's just one vehicle that was there that one time. I could see if they had pictures of my car, which is there every day, parking on the dirt, but it wasn't. It was a friend of mine from Redlands, didn't know about the not parking on the dirt, parked there, and they took a picture of that and gave us a fine of $200 for it. That's outrageous. And then our ground cover in front of my house, 
The city's right away comes up to 18 inches in front of my house, in front of my front door. What do they want me to cover? I've been trying to get with them for years. To ask them if they want to put the ground cover on their right away. Give me the stuff, I'll spread it. You know, we'll get back to you on that. We'll get back to you on that. They never do. So I want something done. I want our clients suspended until the city can comply with their own code violations and make other people that have contracts comply with their code, city code. And that's all I got to say. Thank you for your comments. I believe a city staff member might meet you in the back in a minute, get some information from you. Irene Rodriguez, followed by, I don't have any other blue speaker cards. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, and City Staff. As you may know, on May 20th, we celebrated Evening at the Pueblo. It was just a beautiful night uh, where all the community came to celebrate the legacy and the vision of Cabas Yorksa. Thank you for celebrating with the community, the board, the volunteers, and the staff. We're ahead already planning for the following year, so we're continuing with the school program. We have identified three schools within this Hot Springs that will be participating in making a difference. Our cultural weekends are also scheduled for January, February, and March. And um, we've been in partnership and collaborating with two different organizations. One is the Diversity Committee, which they will have their inaugural Pride Vesto Festival on November the 18th on Cabot's Polo Museum. And with that, they were able to secure a slot with Eyes on the Desert, so it will be featured both the Pride Festival and Cabot's Polo Museum. And um, we're also excited to be collaborating with Desert Hot Springs Historic Society. In November, we'll be opening our Untold Stories exhibition will be in the second floor of, of the museum itself. And last fall, by the Palm Springs Oasis, they did a whole video that came, that was featured on YouTube about Cabot's Bowling Museum. And the, her series was called Wanderlust, and this is, was done by Andy Las Lasko. And so now they're in partnership where it's gonna be featured at KMIR. And for Cabot's segment, it's gonna be showing on August the 14th, on Monday, between 4.45 and 5 p.m. So it's really exciting. Our museum in the city is getting really high visibility. Thank you. Thank you, Irene. Thank you for everything you're doing for the museum. With that, I have no other public speakers. Would anybody like to speak on an item not on the agenda today? All right, with that, we will close public comments, and I'll go to the city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. I'd like to ask our community development director to speak a little bit about some uh, grant funding we just received. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, in February, I'll just give you guys a brief uh, history, actually. In February, the CVAC Executive Committee approved the creation of a bicycle pedestrian safety program. What that program did was it made $10 million of funding available for projects in the Coachella Valley that directly um, address bicycle pedestrian accidents and fatalities. They opened up the release of applications for grants. They received 31 applications from nine different jurisdictions, totaling over $30 million. Uh, out of those 31 applications, the city of Desert Hot Springs submitted four applications that totaled a little bit more, a little bit over $6 million. CVAG went on and reviewed and analyzed every single application, and they uh, ranked them by um, most effective. They had different criteria they ranked them on, but most effective and the fastest they can get done. Uh, that list was released and was presented to the CVAC Transportation Committee yesterday. And the recommendation from the Transportation Committee was to award the top 10 projects. In the top 10 project, the number one project was actually one project that Desert Hot Springs submitted for $2 million for Palm Drive signals and lighting. Uh, that project would enhance and install some traffic signals, pedestrian signals, and street lighting um, on Palm Drive from Hacienda to Pearson and extend south to Two Bunch. Uh, the next steps would take is that the project would now go to the regional um, CBAG for award or for actual um, finalizing. Um, the agreements were actually going to get negotiated between CBAG and each different agency to the details of the projects. So we are in the top ranked out of the 31 projects to receive $2 million. It's not set in stone yet, but we have been recommended for award. So we're very excited that we did get that grant and we are moving forward with that project as soon as we do receive the funds. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. Mr. Mayor, that's all I have. Thank you. And with that said, we'll move on to mayor and council member reports. If there's nothing else from the department heads, um, 
Who wants to start? It's Mr. McKee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, as usual, went to a number of co uh, committee meetings. Homeless committee met, met a couple of times. Went to the Cabas event, which was very nice this year. We always appreciate that. Attended a mayor's town hall meeting and was forced to say something at it, which I really hate. Uh, one of the good things, we've, ha we've had a number of positive things, and I think what the developmental director just talked about is a massive thing because we have a huge problem with pedestrian accidents on Palm. And, and I just applaud the fact that we, we did what we did and we've gotten some money for it, it looks like. That's, that's positive. But we also had a meeting at both the high school and uh, Painted Hills Middle School that celebrated the fact that two teachers in Desert Hot Springs uh, were named <coughs> Teachers of the Year for the county. Um, my friend uh, Brian McDaniel, and I think most of the people here know him, he's, he's done a number of things for, for the city, uh, got one of the awards and is moving on as far as the possibility of going to state, I think is what it boils down to. Uh, a really big deal as far as I'm concerned. Went to the Desert Hot Springs um, high school graduation uh, there, there are a lot of things that we have to do that I don't look forward to. And uh, the high school graduation is one of the most fun and, and really one of the events that we have every year that I really enjoy going to because it shows the uh, progress we're making as a city looking at those young scholars and their graduation. I wanted to say something really quick and I'm going to hold my comments down a little bit about an article that was in the LA Times about the PACE program. We approve, have approved several PACE programs. These are programs that allow people to have upgrades done to their house, everything from energy to insulation to, uh, you know, just basically fixing up their house. The problem with it is that there are some, un some unscrupulous people out there selling various services. There was an article in the paper about a poor woman in Los Angeles that was sold a $50,000 upgrade on her house she makes $11,000 a year and her property tax bill had a bill of $5,000 on it for paying back that loan. So it is very, very important that when you're talking to people about energy efficiency programs, about doing things to your house, make sure you understand what's going on. Talk to a financial advisor, an accountant. It's worth money to talk to someone that has some expertise if you're going to possibly go into debt so much. I, I was fearful when we talked about this and actually said we're not, we didn't as a city council put any weight behind this. We were just allowing them to put these programs in, in place. We were not saying that the city council was endorsing them. It's just very, very important to understand that when a salesman comes by about these things that they may not have your best interest at heart. So that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah, I want to continue on that. Uh, Mr. Mayor, maybe we could put something on the agenda to call back these approvals that we've given, given uh, with an eye on revoking them. I've uh, I gotten calls to my house telling me that, you know, this is a city program, and I go, oh, that's interesting. Tell me about it. So, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, my God. I swallowed the wrong hole. So uh, maybe if we could get that on the agenda, that'd be good. Um, wow, I just lost my voice, so this is gonna be quick. You want me to go with her first? No, I'll get through it. So I got a really, really long list of things that I went to, but I'm gonna go really, really fast. If anybody wants to hear any more detail, give me an email. Attended uh, Southern California Association of Governments on June 1st with a discussion regarding, regarding um, light rail service expansion. Um, it was my wife's birthday on June 1st, which is the reason that I have to apologize to our new supervisor, Perez, for not making the ceremony, but I understand uh, the council member sitting next to me did a real good job as master of ceremonies. So, um, good job. I heard about that. They were all the talk of the town. Um, met with some people working on a bicycle event. I don't know what's going to come of it, but uh, had some contact with the people that organized the tour to Palm Springs bicycle <coughs> event. And uh, thank you. And um, it's a little too early, but either thinking about a community ride or race, and then possibly 
um, some type of expansion of the tour to give Desert Hot Springs more prominence in that. Obviously, that's something that has to come forward to the council, but um, uh, it was interesting. I am working on a community ride. I found a 10 or was it 12 mile run that goes down Worsley Road. And I thought it'd be nice for everybody to get out there. And what's really, really nice about this is it's all downhill. So we can. <laughs> So, and then, and then we, a bus to bring us back. Yeah, we'll get a bus and a trailer and bring everybody back. So I'm, I'm working on that one. Um, yeah, we got to, not going to pedal back uphill. It's no fun. Um, today we delivered some a welcome packets from the city to the employees at the new county building. And just to let you know, I think some of the local restaurants are already noticing that, uh, you know, some peop new people in town showing up for... Uh, lunch and so this we're getting some good economic impact out of that and so we just delivered a, a letter and a, a little directory of all the local businesses and a welcome booklet and um, they seem to be pretty happy about that uh, so and smile on the faces of the few that we we're able to hand it to and then they're going to pass it out to all 90 employees and monday was the first day that that was now fully staffed attended the airport commission we approved a budget or at least gave a recommendation to the palm springs city council they'll actually approve the budget for the airport but we did the review work on that on the airport commission went to the pearson plaza grand opening the wardman pool is open on may 20th went to the opening day it's now up and running uh, the uh, it's a significantly expanded open swim time as it is with the furby pool do we have an update mr city manager on the furby pool where are we at is that open now it is open and all the equipment is operating as it should be. Good, perfect. So there's an extended swim time. There's a lot of people asking, can they swim any time? And they can. They can swim any time at the Furby Pool and the Wardman Pool. Any time that they're there, that is, that for lifeguards on duty. I went to the Cabot Soiree, went to the Women's Club Scholarship, went and celebrated Sunline's 40 year celebration. I'm on the board down there. Attended the high school graduation. The mayor gave a very good town hall. Um, event and I highly recommend if you have any questions this is just a perfect format I mean if you just want to sit and listen to the questions from your neighbors they're really interesting and the presentation goes pretty quick it's the second time I've seen it I'm not bored yet so uh, and then attended the Memorial Day event congratulations CCAC you did a great job and that's all I have Mr. Mayor thank you thank you Ms. Zavala uh, I attended the Lilac board meeting. Uh, the mayor and I met with um, the new Santa Snow National Monument manager, uh, Jihada, and we spoke about um, our interest in connecting our trails to the monument and expressing our interest to be the gateway city uh, to the monument. Uh, I had a RAP uh, board meeting and we went over grants. Um, I also attended the ACE uh, meeting here at Desert Hot Springs High School. That's the Academy for Careers in Education. Um, I also attended the Memorial Day ceremony. It was a great event. Um, I attended the JFK Disaster Drill where they work with local students to um, use this yearly disaster drill to inform them about different uh, careers in healthcare. Um, I also attended the Department of Public Social Services grand opening, which was great. It's a beautiful building. Um, we also had the Pathways to Success Scholarship Ceremony, which I attended. And this one was for all four-year uh, university students. And we will be having one for our community college students. Um, and just kind of as a quick FYI, um, path, the name Pathways to Success will likely be terminating soon, considering that we are now called One Future Coachella Valley. So if you hear of One Future Coachella Valley, that's the scholarships that we partner with local organizations like the Women's, the Desert Hot Springs Women's Club, uh, Boys and Girls Club, and other entities to give out um, scholarships to our local students. So. Together in partnership, we're able to uh, distribute about a million dollars in scholarships every year to local students. Um, so one future Coachella Valley, remember. <laughs> and then um, I also attended the town hall meeting. Um, I was a delegate for Congressman Rees in Sacramento this uh, past month, so I was not able to attend the uh, Cabot's uh, Museum a celebration, so I'm sorry, next year. And, and I was also unable to attend the Women's Club Scholarship Ceremony because I was stuck at the airport. <laughs> um, and then as uh, Council Member Butts mentioned, I was also the Master of Ceremonies for the 
ceremonial swearing in of our new fourth district county supervisor, Victor Manuel Perez. So it's been busy. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we all had a busy couple weeks. Uh, as stated before, the Department of Social Services office here in Desert Hot Springs is open. Uh, 90 employees have been relocated from either Cathedral City or the Desert Hot Springs Family Resource Center to the new Department of Social Services. We know that 65% of the population here is under the low income and or poverty level here in Desert Hot Springs and utilize some sort of those services. Now they don't have to get into a car, ride a bus, or find their way to these services. They're right here in our backyard, um, right across from the high school. So if you have any questions when it comes to that, it's a beautiful center, stop by and see it. Uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau did meet. There was nothing really pertaining to Desert Hot Springs in the reporting. Uh, they were moving quickly on that meeting because there was another uh, gathering happening, so uh, nothing really pertaining. Um, Eddie Johnson, are you still here? Where'd he leave? Well, he's their Vietnam vet that spoke at the beginning of the meeting. I always like to give him kudos. Him and about six, five or six other Vietnam vets give a talk to the high schools in the Coachella Valley about Vietnam, and they just did it a couple Fridays ago. Um, I just wanted to give him kudos and say thank you for uh, what he does. Uh, he brings light to that situation. He also was a key instrument, uh, a key person who brought the Vietnam moving wall to the city of Hot Springs in 2011 at the high school, and he's helped with the current committee on the Vietnam moving wall coming to Desert Hot Springs. With that said, June 22nd at Mission Springs Park, we've raised $15,000 to bring the wall here. Uh, it houses the people that travel the wall, the walls, the construction, and all the volunteers, food, and um, those types of things. It'll be here on the 22nd, as stated. Uh, it will be a ceremony at 6 p.m. to open the wall, and then the wall will be here till the 26th for your viewing, uh, I believe up to 10 o'clock each evening. I also attended the Cabot Gala. It was a wonderful event, uh, as always. Uh, it was a, probably the best night out of the 10 years I've been on city council and attending these things. It was the, it was the, the nicest evening we've had since then. And uh, I think Russ Martin ordered that up, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Riverside County Transportation uh, Commission Budget and Implementation meeting, uh, Committee met. Uh, the City of Desert Hot Springs will be receiving uh, SB 821 funding again, which is uh, sidewalks, safe routes to school, Sidewalks, our city staff applied for it. It got pulled off the agenda because there was some hiccup with one of the uh, applicants. It's coming back to us and then it'll be awarded this next month. Uh, it's another 200 and I believe $93,000. Danny, did I get that right? And it's gonna be from uh, Cabot Yorks Elementary School down uh, Desert View. Uh, Safe Routes of School is putting sidewalks so kids can get to school safely. We've done both sides of Verbena and now this will be done. So it's an awesome uh, grant and thank you to staff for applying for that. Also attended the Wardman Park pool opening. Furby pool is open as stated. Um, I'll talk more about an event that's gonna be going on this weekend there. Uh, the Women's Club gave away just under $20,000 in scholarships to uh, local students going off to college and to local schools. Um, the Women's Club, thank you again for all the work you do. It's a lot of money to raise in each year and give away. The town hall meetings have been going well. We've had a handful of them recently. We are now uh, not scheduling any uh, town halls uh, in big locations. We're actually just asking um, homeowners groups, uh, faith-based organizations, and uh, any other organizations that want to have a town hall meeting. We'll come to you, the chief and I have been going out, staff members, and doing these town halls, and then we'll have another big one sometime in September, October. This is an opportunity, instead of a big state of the city where you have to come and spend money to come for one night, for a couple hours, uh, we come out to you, do a 30 minute presentation on the state of the city and then you get to ask all the questions you want. And we give you the, we give you the best answers we can to those questions. So uh, something that I thought of when I became mayor after doing the state of the city and seeing what India was doing in their city and I thought it worked really well and I think it is working well. Uh, the teachers of the year as uh, talked about by Mr. McKee, uh, Brian McDaniel, uh, who is the band instructor and choir instructor for Painted Hills Middle School, also was a band instructor at that Desert Hot Springs High School has won many, many, many awards for our city, became a doctor while going while teaching school. He's just mm -hmm. done a fantastic job, and congratulations to him. There was only four teachers in Riverside County, 18,000 teachers that received this, and two of them at Desert Hot Springs received it. Uh, Mr. Brian McDaniel and Miss, I'm not even gonna try to say her last name. It's B-E-Y-R-O-N-N-E-A-U. Baronas? Baronas? Something like that. Everybody calls her Michelle. <laughs> Probably because of that reason. But congratulations to both of you if you're out there watching or, or if you see them around. She's a teacher at the high school. Um, out of all those, all those applicants, two out of 18,000 received here in Dutch Hot Springs. That's something to be proud of. 
uh, Memorial Day event went really well. Thank you to the CCAC for putting that together. They always do a fantastic job. We had a flyover this year, which was really fun. Um, the Desert Sun came in and did an interview. They're doing a bigger story on medical marijuana in our communities and the cultivation. The USA Today will actually be posting a story here very soon across the country, and Desert Sun was asked to do uh, part of that story out of the uh, out of the Coachella Valley. So we did some interviewing. Uh, Desert Hot Springs High School had its graduation. 319 students graduated. 178 are going to college. Uh, so that's pretty fantastic for the city of Desert Hot Springs. And we are the only city council, we've been told, by the Palm Springs Unified School District that actually shows up to the graduation. So thank you to all the council members for showing up. Uh, the Riverside County, which was very interesting, called me and wanted a tour of uh, one of our cultivation sites. So I set it up for them. Candescent was very uh, open to it. And they gave uh, um, members, 10 members of the of Riverside County uh, a tour of our cultivation sites. So uh, some eye-opening for them. No, yeah, it should have been. <laughs> Inside joke, if you haven't been listening, they've been giving us some trouble. Um, CVAG uh, transportation, as stated, uh, I am the representative on that, and we put in for multiple grants, and we're, we're the number one uh, awardee of $2 million. Uh, the reason that we ranked high is that we have uh, the second highest fatality and injury rate for pedestrians in, in uh, the Riverside area in Coachella Valley. We're partnering with uh, Re Desert Regional on a pedestrian safety program in the community, but these grants like this for capital improvements, for stoplights, more lighting, and crosswalks within uh, areas like this is gonna be really important for the city of Desert Hot Springs. Uh, $2 million, uh, this project has to be started within a year, uh, according to the uh, CVAG, and so somewhere between Hacienda and Pearson on Long Palm Drive, you'll see major enhancements coming. And then the Coachella Valley Association Government's Executive Committee met, and another, um, Feather in our cap, the signal synchronization program for the Coachella Valley, uh, Desert Hot Springs was ranked high in that. That's basically synchronizing signals throughout the Coachella Valley so you move uh, more freely uh, while you travel and don't have to stop and go so much. Uh, the program's gonna be, it just finished the study, and study phase and sometime in, in the future, probably not near future, but future, they'll be do, putting these, um, these uh, synchronization program in, in effect. In the last couple announcements, uh, the Healthy Cities Initiatives chairperson has put together this event for this Saturday. You'll find some flyers in the back, so I know you can't read it from that far. I can't. I broke my glasses this weekend. Um, June 10th, this Saturday at 8.30 in the morning, uh, actually start at 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, Train the Trainer will start and meet the police. Uh, we'll multiple other agencies there. They're going to give away 150 bicycle helmets to kids and adults if you want a bicycle helmet. And uh, then at 10 o'clock, they're going to have a family fun ride and walk around the high school. And then at 11 o'clock, uh, there'll be free swim at the Furby Pool and hot dogs uh, hosted by the Desert Hot Springs Rotary Club Appreciation Day. So please come out. It's supposed to be like over 105 degrees. Uh, come out and bring your swimsuits, uh, bring your bike, take a ride, and then take a dip, and then get a free hot dog. Vietnam veteran or moving wall will be here. We talked about that. And then lastly, the senior center. I was fortunate enough to be called to do a town hall at the senior center today. Thank you, Chief uh, and Jim Henson, our deputy chief, for coming out with me today. Uh, we were able to speak. Um, about a year or so ago, I walked in the senior center, and there was about three and a half, maybe four tables of seniors sitting there eating, and they just didn't seem happy. And the city council started to really review that. And we went back to the table with an RFP and came back with um, – not very many good options for the senior center. And we reached out across the freeway to the Mizell Center who came back and actually bid on the, today I walked in, there was standing room only. And it wasn't because we were there. They were actually there to eat lunch. Uh, it was fantastic um, to see that many people there. They have some awesome programs going on. Uh, Desert Hot Springs Senior Center's Rockin' Chair Singers are uh, gonna be June 30th at 12.30. They're having a little concert. They're gonna sing a bunch of songs. And then they have art classes, uh, wine and wildflower, bottle decorating, still, uh, still life, the black and white of it, uh, the painting and drawing, and an abstract uh, printmaking, no press needed greeting cards. Uh, it's very inexpensive. If you're a senior and, and have, wanna have some fun, please stop by the Senior Center. Um, it seems like they're having a great time. All right, with that said, Ms. Parks again isn't here this evening, so we're going to cut it short a little bit and move on to public hearings. Our first public hearing tonight is the no item number 10 on the agenda. This is the annexation number 18, zone 19, to the City of Desert Hot Springs Landscaping, Landscape and Lighting Maintenance District number 2 and levy assessments, Rancho del Oro, 
And Mr. Hold Mayor. on one second. Let me finish the announcement. Our acting community development director, Daniel Porras, will be giving the report. And I think Mr. Betts has a uh, conflict here. Yes, I have property inside the um, Rancho Doloro, so I will recuse. All right. As he's stepping out of the room, if anybody has a ballot that you've received in the mail, you may hand it in. Uh, Ms. Cernick is over there. She will wave, and she will take your ballot. Um, at the, after we're done, at, when we close the public hearing will be the final uh, time that we can take a ballot. So we've got a few items to go through here. Uh, we're going to start with the staff report. Mr. Betts is out of the room now. Mr. Porras. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. I'll give a brief history and go over the annexation and what exactly uh, we're doing today. Uh, just a brief history of Rancho Doro. It's a residential community that was built in 1992-93. There were 259 homes that were built. Majority of the perimeter landscape was completed. There wasn't a landscape maintenance district that was formed and there wasn't a homeowner association that was formed at that time. Initially, the developer was maintaining the landscaping and some time ago, the city began to maintain it. Uh, since then, the city has been paying for landscape maintenance with no specific funding mechanism. We have um, landscape maintenance district. What exactly does landscape maintenance district? It's a funding mechanism that is used to pay for ongoing landscape maintenance of a development. We currently have 18 active landscape maintenance districts and 18 active drainage assessment districts. What it does is, um, depending on a community, in this case a residential community, uh, all the benefiting lots are uh, assessed a certain amount on their property taxes. That amount is collected by Riverside County. Then it is funneled through the city and the city then uses that money to pay for all the ongoing maintenance and all the improvements for that development. That was never formed for Rancho Laurel. Therefore, we're here to move that process forward. Um, over the last few years and a lot of years, um, we have explained the different processes to the, to the public. Uh, just during the last two years, we've had many public meetings with the Rancho Laurel residents. In August of 2015, we met with the residents in this room where we explained and discussed the issues. Um, in June of 2016, we met again and explained the annexation process and the residents directed city staff to provide three landscape maintenance options. What that meant was the, the residents wanted to see a um, three different values of how much they would pay every month, a, 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 the lowest value, a medium value, and a more expensive value. And they wanted to see some renderings on what exactly they would get for that value. In September of 2016, city staff presented the four landscape options and each associated cost. The residents in attendance took a poll and selected option three, which is one of the options that was, that was presented as a preferred option. We then brought those results to city council. City council then approved to begin the annexation process using that option as a preferred option and authorized to temporarily fund the landscape maintenance during the annexation process. In April of 18th, during the City Council meeting, City Council approved the resolution of intent and set the public hearing date for today, which meaning this is the date that the actual ballots were due. The ballots were mailed out on April 21st. The residents have two options, either to support or oppose it, and it's due today um, when it is counted during, this, during the actual City Council meeting. What exactly does an annexation mean? This means that the 259 property owners of the Rancho Laurel are now voting to either annex or not annex into the landscape maintenance district, which will fund the landscape for the perimeter of the uh, Rancho Laurel development, which is shown here in blue. What would it fund? It would fund all the improvements and all the ongoing maintenance for all the perimeter. This is some renderings that were developed during one of the meetings, but some of the existing um, landscape would be upgraded and it would main be maintained pretty much for the rest of the rest of the time. Some of the associated costs with the annexation was for year one, it was $70,907. Year two, it went down to $62,000. Year three, uh, it was estimated at $63,000. What that meant that that whole price gets divided into 259 lots, which would average or would cost an estimated $22 for the first year, $20 for the second year, $20 for the third year, and so on. This is if the assessment is actually passed. We've had three public meetings since then on April 24th, May 17th and May 24th, where we try to explain and we try to answer any qu questions that the public had, more specifically related to the annexation process. And now we're here today, again, April 21st, the ballots were mailed to the property owners to either support or, an or support or oppose the annexation with the preferred option number three. These are due today. These are due actually right now. And the ballots will be counted during this meeting. And the way it works is 
the annexation passes if majority of the ballots that are received are in support. So, example, if we receive 100, then 51 would have to say yes to support it in order to pass. That concludes my staff report. I'll bring it back to the mayor. And then I just wanted to announce that uh, two years ago, a little over two years ago, the city council, before I was mayor, uh, appointed myself and Mr. McKee to uh, a subcommittee to talk with the Rancho de Oro residents. Uh, Rancho de Oro had an unofficial subcommittee that was brought forth to talk about the history and how we got to where we are. And hopefully 20 years later, we're going to have a solution. Whether it's for or against, we'll at least have a solution to this. So I appreciate all the residents for their input. I know it wasn't always uh, fun. It was a little heated sometimes back and forth, but I think we finally came up with the respect for each other and their positions, whether you, your, your position on the, on the annexation is yes or no, at least you'll have some solution to a long dragged out uh, process. And I really want to thank the subcommittee, the unofficial subcommittee uh, of those people who came in and, and educated the city on that because 20 years later you have different council members, different staff members, and no one, can, no one knew exactly what happened 20 years ago. So again, thank you to all of them. Mr. McKee, would you like to add anything? No. Okay. Uh, we'll now entertain questions of staff from the city council. Any questions? All right, we'll now open the public hearing. At this time, what we're gonna do with the public hearing is this is your time to voice your opinion about this uh, before the ballots are counted. You may come up when you state your name, you'll have three minutes, just like at the beginning of the meeting. Please use professional decorum, and this is your time to speak to the city council. Would anybody like to speak to this item? Second call. Final call. All right, this is the last chance before closing public before closing the public hearing for you to turn in a ballot. Does anybody have a ballot that they're continuing they're they're gonna mark right now? Please raise your hand, please stand. I see nobody in the room at this time that has a ballot. We are now closing the public hearing and we will accept no more ballots at this time. Is there any discussion by the city council or questions to staff? With that said, we're gonna take a recess. While we take this recess, you may, as a resident or a member of the public, stand next to the table, but please do not touch the table or interact with the, the people counting the ballots. You may watch them count the ballots, you may see what they're marking, but we please do not interact. There's three officials that will be over there counting ballots, and then they, we will come back to the open session and we will announce the results at that time. All right, with that said, we are in recess.
Can somebody find Mr. Best? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's going to take a while to tally the votes. They've opened them, they've flattened them out, the computer program, now they have to verify them. That might take a little bit longer. We're going to try to get a couple items out of the way while we, while we do that. As soon as they're done, though, they're going to give me a, a, a wave, and we'll, we'll, we'll finish whatever item we're on, and we'll go right back to that item. So thank you for your patience. We just want to make sure the process is done correctly. So at this time, uh, we'll continue item 10 until the, the counting of the ballots are done. We'll reconvene our meeting and go to item number 11. This is a conditional use permit, CUP 02-17, and a development agreement, DA 08-17, the development of an indoor marijuana cultivation facility for a total floor area of 621,920 square feet on 28.18 acre project site, APN 666-370-01. -dash -dash Two through zero one five, located northeast of the I-10 freeway and Indian Avenue, um, in the light industrial zone. Applicant Black Star Financial and Corp. Ray, Ray Doram. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time the, the meeting's back in session, so I have to ask you not to speak at this time. This will be the acting community, sir. Sir, at this time, I, we, everything's being recorded, so we have to have the meetings back in session. Thank you. Uh, the Acting Community Development Director, Daniel Porras. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. At the request of the applicant slash client, staff is recommending that City Council open the public hearing and continue the public hearing to a date certain of June 20th, 2017. We actually have some documents that we're currently revising that will be presented in um, on the June 20th meeting. Is there any questions of staff by City Council on this continuance? With that, we'll open the public hearing at this time and uh, take any testimony f from anyone that would like to speak on this item. I see none. The public hearing will continue to be open, and I will I will take a motion to continue at this time. Motion to continue. Second. Oh, I keep forgetting to do that. I'm, I'm not used to it. All right. <laughs> motion and a second. Uh, please vote. Mr. City Clerk. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Uh, with that said, we'll move on to item number 12. This is a resolution ordering annual assessment of Desert Valley Disposal Solid Waste Refuge Services of Residential Properties for Fiscal Year 2017 through 18. This is our Administrative Services Director, Joseph Tanner, Jr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Uh, Desert Valley Disposal, also known as DVD, is the current solid waste uh, provider for the city of Desert Hot Springs. They entered into a new franchise agreement effective July 1 and runs through the year 2029. Uh, pursuant to the franchise agreement, uh, they are requesting that their annual assessment be placed on the tax rolls for residential properties. There are currently uh, 7,282 accounts representing just over $2 million of, uh, of revenue to, to DVD. We also have a representative here from DVD, Chris Cunningham, to help us ask any questions. That concludes my report. I entertain questions of staff from the City Council. Does anybody have any direct questions to staff? Just one. Uh, where's Chris? I'll, no, you don't have to get up. Um, I, I'd like to, at a date in the future, talk about the overfilling problem we've got in some of the commercial bins that, that we've talked about in the past and, and try and figure out how we can deal with that to make sure that they don't overfill them and then trash go all over the place because there, there's trash over the top. Uh, but besides that, I have nothing else. Thank you. Any other council members? So that would be a change to the ordinance most likely. So maybe we could direct um, um, city attorney to get together with um, Desert Valley Disposal, and if you wanted to put that on, or the mayor could, either way, I don't care. Bring it back in the future for discussion? Yeah, sooner than later. Got it. Any other questions for staff or by City Council? I will open the public hearing. Would anybody like to speak to this item? Second call. Final call. I will close the public hearing at this time, city council discussion and questions of staff, or I will accept a motion for the resolution. So moved. Second. There's a motion for the resolution. Um, any, any other discussion? Please vote. 
Mr. City Clerk. Councilmember Mickey. Huh? I didn't get your vote. I won't talk. Mr. Mickey. Oh, sorry. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Item number 13 is the resolution plan placing Desert Valley Disposal delinquent disposal billing on the county tax roll for fiscal year 2017-18. Administrative Services Director Joseph M. Tanner, Jr. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. This item is to place delinquent billings on property tax rolls. A total of 89 accounts are in delinquency, totaling just over 100, 104,000. Uh, as provided in the Desert Hot Springs Municipal Code, this authorizes placing the delinquent waste disposal accounts on the tax roll. And I'd be happy to answer any questions regarding this item. Entertain any questions of staff from City Council? Yes. How do they get to be delinquent if everything's already on the tax bill? Mr. Cunningham, please introduce yourself. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Member, staff, uh, my name is Chris Cunningham, representative with Desert Valley Disposal. Um, the answer to that question, Council Member Betts, is that in order for uh, properties to be on the property taxes, there's got to be some kind of uniformity to it. That's all of your residentials, um, your single family homes. There's basically one service, it's curbside, nothing changes, but your commercial side and your multifamily side, um, that's going to change due to seasonality, uh, some other changes. So that's why those are billed still monthly. That answers right. that question. Thank you. All right. Any other questions of the City Council? Just... All right. With that, we'll open the public hearing. Would anybody like to speak to this item? Second call. Final call. We will close the public hearing at this time. Yeah. City Council discussion and questions of staff. I will entertain a motion. So moved. There's been a motion to adopt the resolution and a second. Any other questions? All right, please vote. Motion, pa motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. City Clerk. Item number 14 is creating a special tax area, Zone 20, Merge LLC, located east of Little Bronco Road, south of 14th Avenue, and west of Palm Drive, APN 665-080-013, within the Desert Hot Springs Special Public Safety Tax Area. Our Administrative Services Director, Joseph Tanner, Jr. Thank you. This, is the, uh, this item is to create a special tax zone for one commercial property known as the Merge property. Uh, this this tax pays for essential uh, police and fire services for the city to help offset the general fund cost. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions to staff? I see none. I'll open the public hearing at this time. Would anybody like to speak to this item? Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes. For the record. Um, so there were no written protests received for this uh, Item, um, there are no registered voters within the territory of this zone. Um, all the owners of the taxable property in this zone have consented to holding a special election. Um, and then lastly, I concur that um, a special election may be held tonight um, immediately following the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. City Clerk. Anybody like to speak to this item? Second call, final call. Uh, we will close the public hearing at this time. Would the City Council like to have any more discussion on this item? We will now hold the election. Mr. City Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the Council, the landowner has cast the ballot with a vote of yes. All right. At this time, we can adopt an ordinance, establish a special uh, public safety tax uh, area, Zone 20. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? second? Did I cover all the bases, Mr. City Clerk? Yes, Mr. Mayor. All right, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. City Clerk. Item number 15 is creating special tax area zone 21, uh, La Plaza Center, LLC, APN 641-101-005, located at 12106 Palm Drive. 
and APM 641-101-006 located east of Palm Drive and south of Pearson Boulevard within the Desert Hot Springs Special uh, Public Safety Tax Area. Uh, our administrative services direct, that's not, you don't have to recuse yourself on this, Mr. Betts. It's item number 15. Just state your recusal. I'm recusing because we have a property at 12106 Palm Drive, and this sure looks like the address there, so we're at 12106 and a half. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, with that, uh, as soon as he steps out of the room, Administrative Services Director Joseph Tanner, Jr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this again is creating a special tax zone uh, for public safety for two non-residential lots referred to as La Plaza Center, which is located on 12106 Palm Drive. Any questions to staff? No. All right. Um, no questions for staff. We'll open a public hearing. Would anybody like to speak to this item? All right, I see none. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Yes. Okay, similar to the last item, yep. for the record, I'd like to state that no written protests were received, um, that there are no registered voters within the territory, that the owners of the taxable property in the zone have consented to holding a special election, and lastly, that I concur <clears throat> that a special election may be held today, uh, June 6, immediately following the public hearing. Thank you very much. Um, with that said, we'll take any testimony. Anybody would like to speak to this item? Second call, final call. We will close the public hearing. Uh, Council, have any discussion or comments? I, we, I just asked yes. the staff if I can know when that alley is going to be opened up again. And I, 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 I'm asking that now, too. So. Yes, we're getting a schedule from the contractor, so we'll, we'll send you it as soon as we get it. Thank you. At this time, we'll hold the election. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the landowner has uh, cast a ballot with a vote of yes. All right, thank you very much. At this time, there's no more discussion. I'll take a motion to adopt this ordinance. Please vote. Mo motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Since Mr. Betts is still out of the room, uh, staff can just notify him that we're going to go back to item 10 so he can stay where he's at. Um, <laughs> did he peek his head out there? <laughs> All right, at this time, uh, we are going back to item number 10. The tabulation of the assessment balance have been uh, submitted and uh, counted, and at this time, the city clerk will announce. Okay, the results of um, the tabulation um, in support of the annexation, uh, 64 um, ballots and in opposition of the annexation 75. So at this time, the, uh, that measure uh, fails, the assessment. All right, with that said, there is no more action by the city council at this time uh, on this item. Mr. Mayor, members yes. of council, if I may just interject, uh, just for the record, the majority protest um, does in fact uh, uh, you had there is a majority protest therefore exactly as you said uh, the, me the measure fails so there is no um, assessment at this time all right well you have an answer to your question whether you wanted an assessment of lighting and landscape maintenance district or not I appreciate the subcommittee uh, being informed and the residents for your for your uh, input on this at this time City Council has some decisions to make in the future uh, we'll be notifying you when those decisions are made um, at this time, there's no other action by the City Council. Thank you for attending. Yes, Mr. Betts, a return? All right, so. Item number 16 at this time, uh, creating a special tax area zone 22 uh, Bunch Palms Trail LLC. 
located on the southwest corner of Cabot Road and 14th Avenue, APN 665-030-058, within the Desert Hot Springs Special Public Safety Tax Area. Uh, Administrative Services Director Joseph M. Tanner, Jr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, this is a uh, creating a special uh, tax, public safety tax, that pays for essential services uh, for police and fire to offset the general fund. And this is for one non-residential lot located along Bunch Palms Trail. Number six. And cabins. All right, with that said, entertaining questions of staff to, to from the City Council? All right, I have no questions from staff or from council. I'll open the public hearing at this time. Mr. Mayor, for the record, um, I want to state that no written protests were received, um, that there are no registered voters within the territory of this zone, uh, that the owners of the taxable property in the zone have consented to holding a special election, and lastly, that I concur that a special election may be held immediately following the public hearing. Thank you very much. Is there anybody who would like to speak to this item? All right, we'll take public uh, second call, final call. All right, we'll close the public hearing. City Council discussion to staff. All right, we'll hold the election. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, the ballot has been returned with a vote of no. All right, thank you for that. So what's our next step, city attorney? Cannot adopt a special public safety tax, correct? The the vote was no, so we cannot adopt an ordinance establish a public safety tax. That's correct. That is correct. Um, that's correct, the vote's no. So okay. nothing, nothing moves forward. Uh, city council does not adopt the ordinance I think in the near future we need to have maybe a study session on our options and this is the second time we've received a no vote on a special tax area. Right, um, N normally though with, with, and I don't know if it's specifically with respect to this project, uh, interestingly a lot of the projects do have um, either a condition of approval or if they're pursuant to a development agreement that the underlying property owner does in fact need to annex into the district or be uh, subject to the special tax. So um, with that we'll, we should We'll go ahead and uh, look at this project in particular. Uh, something similar happened with the Hyundai Hotel, if I correct, if yeah. I if I recall correctly. So, um, so I'll I'll connect back with staff tomorrow, and we'll get back to the city council. All right. Well, we need to bring those back in the future so we can have discussion on our options. Can I just get a little clarification on that? Um, sure. Quickly, city attorney. So, a ballot is vote yes or no. And you always have the option to vote yes or no when you're casting a ballot, correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. All right, with that, there's no other action that's going to be requested from the City Council on this item, correct? All right, I'm assuming that's a yes. Madam City Attorney? There's there's no other action that, Follow, there's the, no other action that needs to be taken by the City Council at this point. That, right? that is correct, not okay. for this item. Thank you for the clarifying that. Um, uh, th with that, that's all the public hearing items we have tonight. We're moving on to the administrative calendar at this time. Item number 17 is the public art for Medmin Cultivation Project CUP 04-16 located at the southeast corner of Little Morongo and Hacienda Avenue. Um, and it's Scott Tashner, our uh, planning department. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The application you're seeing, this is part of the Medmin project that was already uh, reviewed and approved by city staff and by council. Um, the Art and Public Places, they're proposing two metal origami penguins uh, at the entrance of the project. You can see there's a rendering at the right side. We've got a site plan as well. Uh, Staff is available if you have any questions as far as height. I think they're three feet in height and about 10 feet wide, so just over 30 square feet. And uh, they're stainless steel, powder coated. With that, both the Planning Commission and the Cultural, uh, the CCAC, uh, have made a recommendation to the City Council for approval of the art and public places in lieu of paying into the uh, program fee. The valuation is about uh, $180,000, I believe. So, Staff's available if you have any questions, and we do have a representative here in the audience. Is there a representative like we 
representative would like to speak to the city council on this? Yes. Would you like to speak? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll entertain questions from the city council at this point. Mr. Betts? Can we put a picture up of the penguins? Can staff give us a breakdown on the cost? Those are $180,000. Can you can you give us a breakdown on what's the artist get that much or? Uh, I'm gonna defer. Um, it would need you to come to the mic. Yeah, and sorry, does it, it include the glass box? It's actually gonna sit on a concrete pedestal. Not a glass box no. like that. Or a glass crate. No, it's gonna have to be secured, and you know we've conditioned it for graffiti, but it's you know gonna have to meet building department requirements as far as being you know sturdy and. Okay, I wasn't that concerned about it. My question is about the Evaluation. art. It looks like an awful expensive. Do you have some famous artist or something that? Hi, Council. My name is Priya Saluja, for the record. I'm the compliance coordinator for MedMen. Uh, we're here on behalf of DHS Green Horizons, Inc. This art piece is, yes, by a renowned artist. His name is Gerardo Acer. He's from Los Angeles, born and raised. He came from a really... Um, tough background and he used origami as an escape. As such, he went to Los Angeles Trade Tech College and discovered welding and it became his art form. We got a price evaluation from Gilman Contemporary Gallery. Gerardo Hacer himself does not commission pieces. So this was a piece that was, I guess, like commissioned from an already built source. This. Um, the typical evaluation is roughly seventy-five to hundred thousand for one piece. This includes a mom and a chick, so there's virtually two pieces, separate pieces that are being made and presented together. As to your question about the box, um, I believe it's a steel structure, um, not a glass box. That's basically used as a mounting okay. to give it some height. Good. So Good. if you go to the front entrance. Um, you can see it, there's just a little elevation given in the Hero, box. can you go back to that picture of the front entrance? Sure. Or yeah. Scott? There you go. So do you see it? Sorry, do you see that it's just a bit risen? Mm -hmm. Effectively, that would be the gray box. Okay, great. And CCAC approved this? and they, Yeah, they made a recommendation on May 10th. And okay, well, that's why the CCAC is there, I guess. It was far, far be it from me to be an art critic. So, okay, good. Mr. McKee? Well, I, I was concerned about the same thing my colleague thought about, and I actually did some research and went to a website called Art SY, and most of his art there was valued at between fifty and fifty thousand uh, dollars. I'm I'm really concerned about the difference. Sure. Great. Um, so we based our price estimate off of the certain dimensions that are acquired for each piece. Mm -hmm. Do you know what dimensions the piece says? Well, there were there at? were four or five pieces of various mm -hmm. sizes that were between 15 and, and 50,000 is, is, is what that had for his sale. It could be that per gallery there may be uh, price differentials, but this artist has been commissioned and very um, high rating establishments several museums in LA, the city of West Hollywood. I, I understand. I'm, I'm just saying you know, we're going to have to deal with this. We're learning as, as we go along as far as a lot of the artwork is concerned. And my concern isn't so much with this. It's with how we move forward in the industrial areas. I've said before, I think we should do everything we can to encourage the artwork that's going to be created because of the cultivations to be put in in the commercial area rather than in the, the industrial area. So. No, that's more what I'm interested in than that, mm -hmm. but but thank you. Go back to the main screen, please. <coughs> no, the uh, city clerk. Go back to. The uh, okay. There we go. Thank you. I have nobody else in the queue at this time. Um, we'll entertain a motion. I'm sorry. Public comments. Anybody else like to speak to this? I see none. Close public comments. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. There's a motion and a second on the screen. Any other discussion? I see none. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. 
Approval of the Mission Springs Water District, initiating formation of assessment district number 15 of the Mission Springs Water District. So Administrative Services Director Joseph Tanner, Jr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Brad Neal, the legal counsel for Mission Springs Water District will be delivering the, the report. Was that on there? Uh, sorry about that. And uh, Mission Springs Water District is in the process of initiating the formation of assessment district number 15 of Mission Springs Water District. Uh, the proposed assessment district would include 689 parcels, of which approximately 30 parcels are within the boundaries of the city. Uh, the project that the assessment district is being formed for is to uh, provide sewer improvements to uh, those parcels which are currently on septic systems. Uh, the proposed project will be approximately $9.8 million, and the water district is I'm sorry, I'm gonna to have to stop you for a minute. Uh, within that assessment district, I work for uh, Hidden Springs Country Club that I believe is in that assessment district. Is that true, John? Thank you, I have a financial uh, interest in that as I am their sales manager, so I'll need to recuse myself. Uh, Mr. McKee, uh, since you are the former mayor pro tem, you'll be taking this item. See, I finally got you an item. There, there you go, one that I really want. Sorry about that. I'm not sure that you're in that, by the way. That springs right here. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Go ahead. The, the assessment district will be, um, if formed, it will be formed uh, pursuant to a landowner vote where votes will be weighted on uh, special benefit that are uh, meted out to each parcel. Uh, the, the, there will be a public hearing uh, held and the process will be, uh, will be compliant with Prop 218. Uh, the reason why I'm here tonight is that under the 13 Act, any time an assessment district is formed uh, by an entity other than a city or county and properties are within the boundaries of a city or county, uh, the forming entity needs to get prior approval from uh, the city or county in, in, in which those properties lie. Uh, so like I said, there's approximately 30 parcels that are within the boundaries of the city and the rest is within uh, unincorporated Riverside County and uh, the County of Riverside will, uh, will, will be uh, um, approving uh, with respect to those parcels. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Betts? Have you, as the Mission Springs Water District, come to us every time that you have put one of these through? It would be required any time that there's parcels within the boundaries of the cities, yes. Okay, because I've been up here 10 years and I might have missed one, but I don't remember this happening before. Has this ever happened in the last 10 years? So I would have missed it. Okay, so something new does come along every once in a while. Okay, good. And what's the effect if we voted no? Well, if you vote no, then uh, the assessment district couldn't proceed, but uh, they, they, they'd either have to uh, rejigger the project uh, and exclude uh, the parcels that are currently within the boundaries of the city. Um, and John, I don't know if you want to speak to what damage that would cause I'm, to the residents. I got that part. I'm just asking the question. Um, I, I, I'd like to know if rejiggered is a legal term. <laughs> and um, so how long will these people be? Th this is a vote of everybody that's in here. That, that's right. It, it'll be a landowner vote, a majority vote, weighted on the special benefit that each parcel within the boundaries of the assessment. And you're going to get the assessment received. ahead of putting in the sewers, or the sewers will go in at the same time that you get. If you get the vote, the sewers go in. The 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 assessment district will be re, it'll be required to be formed before the um, before the improvements are installed. Yes. Okay. So, but it could be what two, three, four, five years before the sewers actually go in. Good evening, Mr. Well, sitting in mayor, I guess, and council members, staff. Uh, Mr. Betts, what we we're doing here and proposing here is what we've done with most of our assessment districts since about uh, 1998, is that um, going after grant funding, which I believe Mr. Neal mentioned, there's about $4 million in grant money associated with this project. Uh, what we do is we need to get the local match first, and then we go after, well, we have grant money lined up, uh, potentially, if we achieve the goal of, achieve, of uh, getting all the grant money we're seeking, then the project will go forward. If not, then we have about a 10-year window 
uh, in which we can find other grant funding and go forward with the project. So the key is get the local match in place through the formation of the assessment district and then get the grant money, put the project together and proceed with construction. Okay, and so despite any grumbling you may hear from somebody waiting for the sewers to go in, you are actually doing a good job on getting those sewers in. There's not any of these districts that are left now, is there? They all got sewers. Uh, all that are still in play, yes, uh, there was an expiration of a few properties left from the original, what we're calling the Groundwater Protection Project in 2014. And I think as you've noticed around town, there's a few areas that we've just wrapped up with uh, some funding that are from both the state and federal government. This is a, a new approach, uh, a new assessment district we're forming from one of the uh, previously expired areas, sub areas. And we got some new paving that we as a city council got credit for. Thank you very much. Uh, Anytime. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have, Mr. Acting Mayor. Well, I, I think since there's some confusion as the mayor and mayor pro temps on here, I'd like to adopt the title Grand Poopa. Is that okay? <laughs> You've been watching too much Fred Flintstone. <laughs> I think so. Uh, could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Um, if we could now vote, please. passes three and two abstentions. Thank you. One abstention, one recuse. One absent, actually. <laughs> All right, item number 19, the appointment to the Planning Commission to fill a vacancy for unexpired term. Our city clerk, Gerald Soriano. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Andrew Cerner resigned from the Planning Commission on April 11, 2017, resulting in one vacancy. Um, my office uh, put out the notice of unscheduled vacancy uh, pursuant to the MADI Act and the government code. Um, two new applications were received for this vacancy, uh, David Petrinovich and Vernon Rutherford, and then a uh, previous um, applicant uh, from Richard Duffel. Um, this appointment uh, shall be made by Council Member Zavala uh, pursuant, to the pursuant to the municipal code. And that concludes uh, my second part. So I would, I would like to actually uh, provide an extension for the application given that I didn't receive a lot of applicants and I'd like to um, have the opportunity to review more applications. Motion to continue. How long do you want to continue for? Hmm? Um, I would say. So first meeting in July, would that give you enough time? Yeah, first meeting of July. You want to make the motion? That was the motion. Okay. Motion to continue till first meeting of July. And I'll second. <laughs> okay. That was an easy vote. For Any public comments on this item? I see none. Please vote. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, item number 20 is appointment to the Public Safety Commission to fill the vacancy for unexpired term. Mr. Soriano. Okay, similar to the last item, uh, this appointment is, uh, shall be made by Council Member Zavala. Um, we received four new applications, um, Magdalena Duarte, David Petrinovich um, as his second choice, uh, Public Safety Commission, Jan Pai, Robert Roop, and then um, Previous application uh, applicants interested in the appointment, Richard Duffel um, as a second choice. Gary Gardner, Don Kelly, and Ellen Voigt. That concludes my staff report. Ms. Zavala. So this one was actually very, very, very difficult for me. Um, I love Jan Pai. I love her. <laughs> um, however, in reviewing the applications, uh, Magdalena Duarte uh, spoke about her focus on uh, child safety, and that really, really, really appeals to me because it's it's a focus that you know I 
feel strongly about. And so she was the only person that mentioned that. Uh, so it really got to me. And so uh, I think for that reason, I will be appointing her to, to the commission. And um, hopefully she brings in that lens of um, focusing on, on child safety in the community. Motion to approve recommendation of Magdalena Duarte. Did I get that right? All right, there's a motion and there is a second on the screen. Would anybody like to speak to this item? All right, with that said, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item number 21 is a rezoning of 207-acre study area located northeast, northwest of the Interstate 10 and Palm Drive Freeway Interchange. Uh, Community Development Director, Danny Porras. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Or Scott oh, Tasner. So I'll start it started off. Okay. On February 10th, uh, the City Council uh, was discussing the I-10 corridor and perhaps re uh, rezoning of that and directed uh, city staff to look at the 207-acre area north of I-10 and west of Palm Drive. Uh, after conducting some research and also reaching out to MIG Hogo Ireland, who uh, had previously been working on the city uh, citywide general plan update um, and evaluating the timeline and the cost between doing the 207 acres and then or resuming this uh, citywide update and including that 207 acres as well as uh, some other things that the city might want to pursue. Staff uh, evaluated and has come up with a recommendation to uh, approve proceeding with the citywide general plan update and incorporating the uh, zoning general plan amendment for the 207 acre study area and also uh, authorizing the city manager to execute a contract with MIG to resume and complete the citywide general plan update with approval as to form by the city attorney. So staff's available uh, if you have any questions. We do have uh, Jose Rodriguez, he's uh, the project lead for MIG Hogo Ireland. Mr. Mayor, before we get too far away from what he just said, that sounded like a really good motion to me. Did you get that, Gerald? Uh, that's fine, except for one thing. I, I still want to continue uh, consider putting a moratorium on the area. I, I asked about an overlay, and that would take about the same sort of manipulation. And, and I, I'm just concerned that in the period of time between now and when the general plan comes to fruition that some of that will be gobbled up. Can't they come back to us? I mean, we did that once already. Mm -hmm. Well, you, we tried it in one other area that failed. Or, Do we have a map of the area? Yeah. Um, that is something staff has been considering, too, um, it, during the time, because uh, the timeline looks like about eight months to complete that that might be an option that the council would want to pursue, as well as doing a moratorium on, you know, that 207 acres. Would, would a moratorium cost a huge amount of money or is it just a matter of writing a piece of paper up? Um, what would need to come back is, um, depending on how long the city council wants a moratorium to be, it would be uh, most probably published in the newspaper, cost some money to do that. I would have to actually draft up the ordinance, so there's some legal fees in that. But Although I that was use, free. I, that's correct, <laughs> all of our legal services. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, as a matter of fact, I have a, some good templates from the one that I had drafted previously. So um, hopefully the cost wouldn't be too much it, it moving that forward. But I would need some direction in terms of uh, what it would look like, et can, can we stay on the zone on, on the map, please? Um, yeah. the, the, when I brought this up to the... Seven acres. I'm yeah, sure. when I brought it up to the city manager, why don't you talk about... Chuck, what you thought as far as what it's already zoned? Well, you see the RD definition. That's a county zone for rural desert. We have a section RR, rural residential, a commercial, and uh, we have the um, light industrial section. Uh, you'll see that the light industrial, industrial section, although runs along the north side of I-10, uh, but it is significantly off of... Uh, off of Palm Drive, uh, west of Palm Drive. Uh, I think that the area of concern would be the 
L uh, I area and as well as the C R area. Um, but again, uh, if the idea is to specifically state that those two areas are only going to be utilized uh, in the future for commercial development and it is going to be restricted for um, other uses, then uh, my, my only thing is, is that at this point, um, those are the only buildable areas. So if we were going to do a moratorium, I would think those are the only two sections we'd have to concern ourselves with. Scott, can you add to that? Yeah, because of the zoning, uh, you know, if the moratorium is for cultivation, uh, we wouldn't allow it in, it, the only zone that would be allowed is the LI. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, commercial, it's not allowed, dispensaries were maxed out, so uh, unless the council was going to consider another dispensary down in that area, but. I, I would only do that so the city manager's head would explode. Okay. Well, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm pursuing the moratorium. And beyond the black box, that other extension is a current project we have in Desert Land Ventures. Uh, I, and the I, only I, thing I'm saying about the L, uh, LI is that it's, it's not a very buildable location because of access. But uh, again, that's, uh, that's a decision above my pay saying. grade. I'm sorry, sir? I'm not following what you're saying. We're talking about incorporating this entire area within the black box, correct? That's it. Hmm? Yes, sir. As a moratorium area. But we, there is not a need to. The only area where you can build right now uh, cultivation is in the uh, light industrial area, which runs just north of I-10. Yeah, but I, I guess what I would say is there's not a need not to. Hmm. No, it's completely up to you. That's the reason I wanted him to discuss this. I have my own view on it, and he has one that's different. I bet you I'm agreeing with you. Huh? I bet you I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> I just want to make sure we don't get ourselves into the same situation we had around Indian, where we sort of had already allowed a bunch of people to do things in that area. I would, I would just assume right now have a moratorium on it in general until we can figure out how we're going to deal with the, that area. We can pass this item tonight, and we'll just have to come back for the moratorium. Is that okay? That would be fine as far as I'm concerned. You've already made a motion, haven't you? Mm -hmm. yeah, was, can we get Scott to repeat my motion? Before, you, sure. before we do all that, I do need to take public comments. Would anybody like to speak to this item? Second call, final call. Okay, I'll entertain the motion at this time. Okay, staff's recommendation to the city council is approved with proceeding in the citywide comprehensive general plan update incorporating the rezoning and general plan uh, update amendment for mixed use commercial uses in the 207 acre study area and two to authorize the city manager to execute a contract with MIG to resume and complete the citywide comprehensive general plan update with approval as to form by the city manager. Mr. Member, members of the council, just to be a little bit more clear, with ex with uh, because we don't actually have the contract with MIG um, in the agenda, uh, should the city council so desire, it would be to authorize the city manager to execute and negotiate a contract rather than just the execution. I thought if we, we voted for this, we were actually just including it in the citywide general plan update that would be included in that cost since they're having to do it anyway. I didn't know that there was going to be an increase in, co in cost. No, Maybe. there shouldn't be any increase in cost. No, my, that, that was my assumption. You're exactly, you're exactly right. It's, this is, um, if we were to uh, go with uh, the just the 207 acres, they gave us a specific price for that, but you'll see that it's almost, it's close to $100,000 uh, less than the actual price to finish the entire general plan, which would include this 207 acres. Right. And we've right. already under contract with these people, right, Danny? Yes, we, we were before. This will be to complete that entire update, yes. So we will, we'll have to negotiate the update, but that's the price of it. That's correct. And that'll include scoping. Public and it'll include the 2,000 acres and, I mean, uh, 207 acres, and, and uh, we will then obviously negotiate the balance. That was the price that they've quoted us, though. We do want the negotiation. So it looks like this is a motion to hurry up and go ahead. All right, does everybody understand the motion? Yes. Gerald, can you get some sort of that on the screen? <laughs> Improve yeah. staff recommendation. I like it. Good job. Go with Scott's recommendation. Huh? <laughs> All right, is there any more discussion on this item? Can I have a second on it? Please vote.
Motion, motion passes. Did, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item number 22 is a continue from the May 16th, 2017 meeting. Approval of the Second Amendment to the Joint uh, Exercise of Powers Agreement of the Eastern Riverside County Interoperable Communications Authority, known as ERICA, Chief of Police, Dale Bondary. Mr. Mayor, uh, Council, uh, hopefully um, in, in the packet you saw significantly more information including the, the original JPA um, and so that you can see the difference. I know this was reviewed, I believe at Councilman Betts' request by the city attorney. Um, and it, it again, it basically, the premise is currently they operate our radio system um, and then obviously the backbone that goes with it. Um, what they're wanting to do is potentially expand into other technical areas um, and look for grant funding um, as, as a JPA, basically getting better bang for our buck. Um, it doesn't commit us to purchasing or participating um, in any of those items. Um, um, or, or limit us purchasing as long as it's compatible with, with the current ERICA system, which we would have to do now. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Mr. McKee, you're in the queue. Thank you. I just appreciate the, the Chief's work on this. We had a discussion the other day about it. And my whole point in, in asking that this be fleshed out a little more was pretty simple. I wanted to make sure that our own police department had the ability to do what they thought was right and wasn't gonna be caught in a situation that the JPA was gonna be dictating to us what was going on. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, we've gotten answers on that and he's comfortable with it, so thank you. Any other questions from council? So the motion would be- Hold on one second, any, any public comments? Second call, final call, all right, Mr. Pitts. Well, I was just going to try and work into a motion. The Please do. Council Member McKee's statement. Are you going to, since you know that better than I do, that you won't tie the hands of, are you going to include that in a motion? And I'll vote for it. I, I can. I approve staff recommendation with the understanding that the, our local police department still has control over ultimately what is purchased. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Please vote. I was voting. Hey, what happened to my second? <laughs> All right. No. Please vote. The mayor was in a hurry. Sorry. <laughs> I was just going for the area there. Motion All passes right. unanimously. Thank you very much. I have nothing pulled off the consent calendar tonight. Uh, any future agenda items the council would like to see that wasn't mentioned tonight? Hearing none, any public comments? Anybody didn't get to speak at the beginning of the meeting would like to speak now? All right, with that, we are adjourned. Thank you.